Continuing our discussion on probability, we're going to talk about permutations and combinations and some combinatorics here. So let's define a couple of terms. Permutations, and an important point to remember is in the permutation, the order the things are selected matters. And this is how you see it written in math books a lot. Uh, P of n choose r. So here, to define it all, and it'll become much simpler, so don't get lost on the early terminology. It'll be much simpler when we have an example in just a second. We're going to pick r as the number of things we're picking out of n things total. And a formula for that is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Combinations, order that we're choosing the things doesn't matter, and it's written in math books as c of n choose r, n factorial over n minus r factorial times another r factorial on the bottom. We're not going to really use these formulas much to calculate things. I'm just going to show them for, to, for our discussion. And as a quick reminder, factorial mathematically, factorial means you multiply from the number all the way down. So if this was 10 factorial, it would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to, to 1. So let's take a couple of examples that will show what these crazy formulas are trying to say. Let's say you have 20 students in class. How many ways can you form a club of four students? And we're going to have two different ways of doing this. One we pick with order mattering, and just the math will follow, and the other the order doesn't matter. So why would the order matter? Well, maybe we have a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. So obviously it's very different to you if you're president or treasurer or vice president. Those are, would be different clubs in your mind because it seems different. And even without our formulas, we could calculate this. 20 students are in the class, so you have 20 people to pick for president. Once you've picked one of those 20, you have 19 left to pick for vice president. And then after you pick two people, you have 18 and 17 and so on left. So we multiply those together and we get an answer, 116,280. Let's see how this would apply to that formula. The formula, P of n choose r, says 20 factorial, this is the n factorial that we're choosing from, over n minus r, 20 minus 4. r is the number we're picking. So 20 minus 4 or 16 factorial on the bottom. Now, remembering what factorial is, it's 20 times 19 times 18 all the way down. And likewise, the 20 minus 4 is 16 factorial. is 16 times 15 times 14 all the way down as well. Of course, we know when we have a bunch of things, factors top and bottom, we can cancel. So even though it's not written, the 15 is hidden in the three dots. All the way down, we cancel everybody off. And we're left with the same multiplication we, we instinctively did above. This is how it's going to look on our calculator. To demonstrate that calculation, we have to type the 20 first. Then I select math, math key on the calculator, and I move over to PRB for probability. You can move left one spot rather than going three to the right. And we want permutations, that's NPR, the second one in the list, and 20 choose four. We get the same answer, of course. So this is actually how we're going to calculate. We'll just start by that, because this is going to be our friend, how to do it on the calculator. And now let's say we had four students in a club. Doesn't matter what order they're choosing at all. So if Bill is president or vice president, it won't really matter in this club. They're just four students, they formed a club. How many ways could we do that out of a class of 20? If you think about it, it starts kind of the same as the previous problem. But in this problem, you know, maybe a student named Bill was president in one club and in another club he was vice president or secretary or treasurer. He could have been in four different spots. So if we take that previous answer, that 116,280, and we think about it, each of the people in the club well, there were four of them that could have been chosen first, then three for second, two for third, and one for last. Or four factorial, or r factorial, as the formula says. So this club is repeating the same four people over and over again, and there's 24 different ways it could have done it. The first person chosen could have had one of the four offices, and once he's chosen an office, there's three left for the second, and so on. So if you divide that number by 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, you divide this by 24, you'll get the right answer. But on our calculator, we can calculate it as... 20 and CR, remembering that the C combinations, the order doesn't matter. So 20, math, over to probability, down to NCR, 4. And we enter that and we get 4,845, as, as we suspected. Now we're going to use this to calculate some interesting problems. So this is the first four we'll look at, and we'll do many others. But let's say you pick seven cards from a deck without replacement. So you simply deal a hand of seven cards out. Find a problem with getting five hearts. And if you've already seen the lecture in class, you might want to pause the video right now and, and just do these problems and then check back. Or if, whenever you feel ready. If you feel ready to solve these problems, it would be a great idea to pause and go ahead and do it. So, five hearts. We're picking five cards from the hearts. Of course, that, we're picking seven cards total, so we have to figure out what those other two cards are going to be. We're going to use the basic law of probability. 
which says that we can put the total possible things, the total count of everything that could happen on the bottom, and then we'll count specifically what we want on top. Well, on total what things we're doing are the total number of hands choosing seven cards out of 52, because we're picking seven out of a full deck of cards, 52 cards. So seven out of 52, this is the total count of all the seven card hands you could get. Now on the top, in specific, we want five hearts. There are 13 hearts, and we're choosing five of them. But we're going to also have to account for our other two cards. The other two cards must be other cards besides hearts, or else we wouldn't have five hearts. And there are 39, or three other suits for 13 each, for 39, and we're choosing the other two cards out of that. Now to do this on the calculator, we're going to get a little practice typing this. 13, I have to type the number first, math, probability, NCR, 5 times, it's always a multiply, 39, math, NCR, 2, divided by 52, math, NCR, 7. So thir 5 chosen out of the 13 hearts, that's my 5 hearts. That implies, even though it wasn't said, we must have chosen, chosen the other two cards out of the rest of them, the 39. Oh, I typed something wrong here, didn't I? Hit the wrong button. Okay, delete that part. Math, probability, and CR must have moved the wrong spot. And seven on the bottom. There we go. So now the calculator is showing precisely what I want. And I hit enter and I get a probability of 0 0.007. A couple more decimals, but we'll round it off there. Seven times out of a thousand, you would get exactly five hearts. Now a flush of any kind. And this, I'm going to say exactly five. We, we could, could do flushes where you got six hearts and seven hearts, which would mean poker, since you know I just came back from Vegas, the math, math conference in Vegas. But for now, I'll we'll just say that exactly five. There will be four different ways of getting this. This is a flush in hearts, so just spades, clubs, and diamonds. But you could also get six hearts or seven hearts, and we'd have to do a couple more calculations. wouldn't take long, and we'll do that later, but there are four different ways of getting this. Now let's look at three aces to set up a totally different problem. Okay, three aces. There are four aces. So we're going to choose three of, out of the four aces. Now, in addition to th choosing three out of the aces, where are the rest of my cards? Because after all, we're still dealing with a seven card hand out of our deck. Well, if I choose three from the aces, there are four more cards to account for. And where did they come from? Must not have been aces. Have to be something else besides aces. So 48 NCR4. There are four aces, 48 non-aces, and totals to 52. Look at the symmetries here. 13 plus 39 is 52. 5 plus 2 is 7. 4 plus 48 is 52. 3 plus 4 is 7. And this will generally be the case when we set these problems up properly. And here's a neat trick, particularly if you're taking a test and you got to do this stuff quickly. Second entry will pull up the last calculation, and I merely need to move around on it, change some numbers. So instead of 13, I want 4. 4 choose, okay, I don't want 5, I want 3. 4 choose 3 times, I don't want 39, I want 48. Choose, I don't want 2, I want 4. So I'm simply changing the top numbers. 4 choose 3 times 48 choose 4. Bottom stayed the same, and I hit enter, and I get my new answer, 0 0.0058. Six aces. Now you may already be thinking something to yourself on this, but if so, if not, it doesn't really matter. This would be choosing out of my four aces, I'm going to choose six. And then out of the 48 non-aces, I would choose one. So there's my seven cards, 52 NCR7 on the bottom, just the same. So let's use the second calculation again. Four, choose, I change that to a six. 48, choose one, and hit enter. They're very quickly to do this, and it says zero. Is that a surprising result? Well, not really. Is it really possible to get six aces? If you get six aces, you might get your arms broken in Vegas. It's obviously, there's only four aces in the deck. How the heck are you going to pick six? So, and we know a probability zero means impossible. That took about forever.